I want to start by, I think, echoing some of the introductory comments, talking about the incredible change in philosophy that this administration has brought to the task of governing, especially in contrast to the previous administration. So I'll try to describe that philosophy as an observer in terms of their actions uh, and, and give some examples that I think fit uh, those observations. But I have to first start by contrasting it with the philosophy of the previous administration, which I believe was one that felt simply that the market was right and that government intervention in the market on the face of it was not likely to be right. And therefore, there was a, an overwhelming burden of proof that had to be met before you could justify federal inter intervention through regulatory policy. Well, the fact of the matter is, uh, all regulatory proposals have strengths and weaknesses, pros and cons. And because in many cases that the pros greatly outweigh the cons, that you're actually doing a disservice to the American people by not putting those regulatory protections into place, that you're really shortchanging the people who you should be protecting. This administration has brought that philosophy, I think, to bear by saying, this is a matter we want to get just right, not too much, not too little, because where we need it, uh, it's very beneficial. In my area, environmental policy, even under the Bush administration, they would put, publish an annual report by OMB, and it would document the overwhelming benefits, according to their calculations, which were often uh, loaded, the overwhelming benefits of those um, regulations compared to the cost. So imagine what we could have done if they hadn't meanwhile been trying to block or rescind one regulatory policy after another. So when this administration came to office, they really took the approach of saying, uh, we're going to get it right, we're going to use science, and I would also agree, we're going to put people into place who have this philosophy who are going to make it happen. And they really have put some exceptional appointees into place. Uh, Cass Sunstein, who Michael works for, uh, is one of the most uh, astute regulatory experts on this subject in the country. Uh, Carol Browner and Nancy Sutley, uh, who advised the president on environmental policy, have successful experience at really every level of government. Uh, th uh, the president's science advisor, advisor, John Holdren, is really an outstanding expert on science policy, renowned expert. And that's just the White House. Uh, the cabinet is also just loaded with talent. So these people are carrying out a philosophy of using regulatory policy to actually protect and benefit the American people. Uh, on environmental issues, uh, plainly their hallmark has been trying to lead America into a true clean economy future, which is, I think, by far the biggest environmental challenge that we face, not only in the U.S., but globally. And they understand that achieving that will result not only in less pollution, but more jobs, and greater security, that we can wean ourselves from dependence on foreign oil over time while actually rejuvenating the American economy and creating technological leadership. Just a few of the actions they've taken in this area to back it up is first ever greenhouse standard for automobiles, which was negotiated with the auto industry last year, uh, a legal finding that greenhouse gases endanger the health and well-being, uh, welfare of the American people, which will pave the way for additional regulatory action. And if you've ever had that little light bulb go off in your head, well, in fact, they issued a rulemaking on light bulbs <laughs> that will actually save more money for the American consumer than any regulation on energy efficiency that the Department of Energy has ever issued. So this is a sample of them going forward in this area to accomplish what they can. I grade them on the curve a little bit on energy and uh, climate policy only because they can't control uh, all the actions that need to be taken. They've sent a visionary far-reaching measure to Congress which Congress has not yet passed that will set the limits on greenhouse gases and provide the incentives to get us the rest of the way down this clean energy path. But within the power of what they can do, they've done what they can. Let me mention two other areas quickly because I think it rounds out this philosophy that it's not just a one-off issue. 
health. They realize that, that the environment is where you live and the quality of that place affects your health very much directly. And as a consequence, really looked across a wide range of regulatory policy on environmental health uh, with Lisa Jackson, the administrator of EPA in the lead, uh, looking at uh, matters like atrazine and perchlorate, which is a threat to drinking water, and mercury emissions from power plants, which the administration had tried to weaken, and uh, the courts rejected, and now this administration is moving forward with. And the last area I would mention is natural resource policy. Uh, the president has called on his cabinet to put together a plan for governing our uh, fragile and threatened ocean resources, and we're expecting that plan to come out this spring. So really you see across the board the adoption of this philosophy, and uh, we really give them, uh, them great marks in the first year.